Hey guys, Aaron and Eric here from Matt Kiteboarding. Uh, today we're here to talk to you about transitioning and riding swells with your wing foil board. Back to basics. You're able to go in a straight line to the left and right. You're able to pump your board. You're able to pump your wing. You're able to pump your mass. Yes. You're up and you're riding. You've got nice wind. You're cruising along. It's time to make your first turn. Turn up wind. Yeah. As you turn yeah. up wind, you're slowing down. Sure. But you're moving into water that's moving this way. So as you're slowing down, Keeping you actually have an apparent speed yeah, yeah. to keep you foiling. Now my my natural gravitation was to, to jive and go downwind. You're exactly. Saying, Tack and go upwind. Yeah. It seems yeah. easier. It but was you're gonna a, crash a lot of times. Yeah, and I think And every a, time it takes you downwind farther and then you gotta right. walk back up wind. I'm I'm gonna try that next time. <laughs> so you're carving up wind, flag out your wing, yep. just carve up wind, make it as far into the turn as you can, allow yourself to drop down. And then switch. Switch okay. your feet, complete your turn in taxi mode, yeah. pump back onto foil the other way. Yeah. And if you keep doing that, even yeah. if you fall, you're not gonna drift downwind. Sure. And, so, and if you if you jibe, if you had downwind, you have to maintain some speed. You're gonna need to right. pump through that or or you know keep your wing sheeted right. in a way that, that keeps you powered through yeah. what three quarters of that that turn. Right. Yeah. And you're trying to figure out how to carve without ever having done it sure. before. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah. Once you made a few of these turns upwind partially and then you taxi out, as you head upwind, right when you flag it out, already be pumping mm -hmm. gently, yeah. even if you don't need it, right, right. start doing it before you need it. If you wait to slow down and try to pump to save yourself, it's often you too late. Gotta make up some ground, yeah. So pump before you need it, pump through the turn, flag it out, pump all the way around, yep. let yourself settle down, make a transition. Perfect. The foot switch is the hardest. We do that last. Got it. Yeah, that was that was a follow up question. Yep. So. Yeah, I I, I was naturally thinking uh, it, probably as as a surf minded rider, I'm heading out and it, as a little swell came in, I just instinctively wanted to transition on it. And then right. about midway through, I'm like, hey, wait a minute, I don't know how to do this yet. <laughs> well, <laughs> but I just, it was fun to just pick off the swell was so and, and, much and fun. feel that uh, that energy and yeah. that little bit of a gas pedal, a little bit of acceleration, uh. but. I quickly ran out of speed because I wasn't able, I wasn't experienced enough yet to manage the power to stay. I wasn't pumping the foil. I wasn't managing the power in my wing effectively. I think I was more just experimenting, and I was stoked in the fact that I was still up and riding at right. that point. And when I when I did bank on it and jibe, I just didn't know the next right. steps to manage that. Yeah. Whereas with with attack, while it is a more advanced maneuver i feel it's like, like you, yeah and it makes great sense like you say you're heading into uh the wind you're heading against you know the the water the, pressure yeah. increases because the water's moving this way at yeah. a couple of miles an hour and even if you're slowing down you're yeah. still getting power from getting the that, water moving yep, this way that lift and keeps you up on foil makes perfect sense yeah i'm gonna botch that but i'm gonna try <laughs> right now it is tempting to do the downwind turn and come out of it and then ride toe side. Sure. And then carve this way and then ride heel side. The problem is people do that and they ride dominant stance when they do that. And they get good enough that they're not falling anymore and they don't want to go back yeah. and start learning it switch because then yeah. they're crashing again. Sure. So if you do the hard part yeah. first. Yeah. And later learn. everything mm -hmm. else is easier. Yeah, learning both uh, yeah. to switch to switch feet. Yeah, because there's plenty of riders out there who, who don't. Um, they they are stuck in the way. Not stuck, but they're 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 efficient in their offside riding and just and just deal with it. But boy, uh, it's it's much easier on you, energy wise, yeah. and it's more efficient for for upwind. Uh, attacking you can you can get up wind so much better right. on your heel side than you can on your toe side mm -hmm. uh, so it is while a bit more challenging especially to somebody who hasn't been in a wind sport like kiteboarding where you're utilizing your left and right foot uh, somewhat balanced yep. if you're riding a twin tip especially um, so yeah that might be a little bit of a uh, of a stretch for some people but like Eric is saying I, I, I agree man I think it's it is absolutely worth that little bit of learning effort in the beginning to make sure that you're able to equally ride uh, strong side and weak side. It's, it's super beneficial. Once you're making some of your upwind tacks, 
and you've gotten the hang of making a car while pumping, mm -hmm. releasing the sail, grabbing it again. You're going some prerequisite skills dialed in, isolated in little chunks yeah. before you try to make a full downwind transition. Yeah. So Perfect. first thing you're going to do is you're going to want to practice carving without changing direction. Okay, so kind of like You're going to carve like 90 degrees downwind, but then carve back upwind. Yeah, so just kind of kind of S-turning a little bit. You're doing an S-turn downwind and back yeah. upwind. Yep. You're going to do that goofy and regular. The first half here, when I'm riding goofy, yeah. can be matched with the second half here when I'm coming out of a turn riding Red, regular, regular yep. foot. And the same with the opposites. Yep. So do those S-turns 90 degrees down, 90 degrees up, a lot of times so you have an instinct for how much toe pressure. And yeah. The first time you carve down wind, what you're going to find is as you lean the foil over and you're carving, carving builds up centrifugal force. It picks up a little bit of speed, huh? It picks up speed, but it also wants to rise up. So as you go into the turn, be cognizant that if you don't apply a little more front foot pressure, sure. she's going to try to wheelie out. Got it. Got it. This yep. gives you a lot of practice for short bursts of that centrifugal force there and off to this side. Perfect. And One, that'll, that'll vary depending on yeah. the foil that you're using, correct? I yes. mean, the, the bigger that the foil is, uh, and if you're a beginner, that's you're probably going to be using a larger right. foil. It's going to take a little more effort to, to move that right. uh, as opposed to something a bit more advanced. Right. Yep. Um, another thing you want to do is if you see a little rolling bump or a swell, Start your turn out in front of it in the trough okay. so that you catch just a little bit of a push yeah. before you go. Sure. This yeah. allows you to start getting a sense for how the texture of the water is going to affect you. Yes. I'm tracking So you, you do these goofy and regular. You practice a lot. Once you've done that, then I want you to ride along carve all the way down with it flagged out. Always release your sail early while you're learning. If okay. you hold on too late, it can get in the way. Got it. Um, as you go downwind, if you go downwind and you match the speed of the wind or even going faster than the wind, the wing will get blown into your oh, face. Sure, sure, yeah. It'll be back with yep. it. You flag it out, bring it all the way around. You're coming out toe side. Allow yourself to touch down and then turn yourself around, yeah. pump back on the foil going the other way. Do a lot of those. Yeah. In light wind, medium wind, strong wind. But if you rush the process, you're going to spend more time crashing and you actually go in reverse sure. because you're going to start questioning whether you actually understood it when you started. I love it. I love it. Once you've made some coasting 180s, Try some 180s where you're pumping through it. Because as yep. I said before, most people don't have enough speed yeah. to carve through all the way, move their feet, sure. and then grab the wing. So you're going to have to assist that a little bit. And <clears throat> when it's time to move your feet, you already have to be pumping. And yeah. I'm going to get to that right now. <laughs> so you're pumping, you're pumping. The back foot pushes, it comes up. The front foot pushes, it goes down. The back foot pump pressures, it comes up. And as it's coming up, that's when the back foot comes forward, it starts to go down because all your weight's forward. So immediately sure. this foot comes back and brings it back up. Got it. It's a timing thing. It is, huh? <laughs> it's not easy. And so if you try to do this before you're very comfortable and instinctive with your pumping, you're just going to eat shit. <laughs> and I don't want you to eat shit. Right, right, right. I so love it. That, that's it's awesome all about concept. isolating your variables, polishing them individually. If you have to think about any one of these skills in order to do it, there's no chance sure. of combining sure, them. Sure, right. You're going to be overthinking one of them and, and uh, neglect the other. Yeah. Now, waves and swells, there's a difference. Waves break and surfers can ride them. Sure. Swells roll. They might get a little bit of white water on the top, but they don't stand up straight and then crash right. down. And as I said in the previous video, when you are riding a bump like this, yeah. 
the water molecules are rolling like this consistently, dependably. You know it's going to stay sure, the you know, same. You know what the feel is like. You know yeah. what the feel is like. <clears throat> but when you get rolling wave and it comes to a sandbar, it starts getting shallow. As soon as the water molecule touches, the rotation goes from this way sure. to this way. Well, it way. makes sense. It has to go somewhere, right? It's, it it's, has it's to go around, somewhere. It's, it's going to flare and out. And it's to the flaring side. out. Mm -hmm. And at the moment where it goes from rolling this way to rolling this way, you got some serious turbulence. Sure. If yeah. you cannot anticipate it, make the proper correction before the change. Yeah. There's no chance of reacting to the change and saving it. You're going to go down yeah. and you're going to play frog in a blender. Nobody wants to play frog in a blender. You are, <laughs> that is you are leashed to uh -huh. your board. Yeah. You are leashed to your foil. Yep. You are leashed to your wing. Mm -hmm. Those lines can wrap around you yep. and then you're bouncing off your hydrofoil. Yeah. And even your board isn't comfortable to bounce sure. off it. Yeah. Done that with yeah. surfboards for many years. Yep. So, foiling is three-dimensional and that is exponentially more complicated yeah it's like the difference between a flat piece of paper and a box the volume difference is incredible so safety check wear your helmet and your impact vest it yes. saved my life multiple times yep know your limitations Clint Eastwood said that yeah dirty yeah. Harry yeah he's got to know his limitations yep. if you don't you're gonna you're gonna pay for and it. And that's an ego check too. That's, that's an that's ego one of those check. Those things that we have to be careful with. Rest frequently. Rest <clears> before <throat> you're tired. You're having a great time. You want another ride. Maybe you should go sit down for 15 minutes, sure. drink some water, and have a power bar. It's surprising the amount of energy that you expend just getting back on your board. Each time you each time you fall off it, just climbing back up and getting yourself righted. You're doing and, and the press. Yeah. You're rising up. Yeah. And you're doing the. I mean, hey. Yeah. How many and, and, and of these just, can you do? Yeah, just getting to the point of readiness, you know, yeah. because you have to collect your board, get back on it, get up to your start position. You might have to flip your wing, mm -hmm. uh, get that back in position. That alone expends energy that, and it's a whole new muscle group that's being utilized right. as I'm, I'm coming from kite surfing. And that's, I was like, oh yeah, this is, I'm, this isn't like an, an unforeign or, a, you know, a, this is not a foreign concept to me, but it's, entirely new muscles being utilized yeah. and, and, and humbling yeah in, in a good way but yeah it's it's there's a lot of energy being used and this is where using a much bigger board than your body weight yeah. comes into play because sure i'll bet you could do 30 of these right now on sure. flat ground but if you're doing it on a tippy board yeah. and chopping waves your muscles new. are working 10 times harder yeah 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 Thir 30 squats is like 300 squats all of a oh, sudden because <laughs> and your legs are burning, you're finally standing up in your foil and you're like, ah, you're gritting yeah. your teeth, you're not having fun. Yes. Rest frequently, drink water, know your limitations, um, and beware of intermediate syndrome. Yeah. Intermediate yeah. syndrome is where, oh, I'm not a beginner anymore, the beginner safety rules don't apply to me. Actually, sure. you can do a lot more damage to yourself yeah. as an intermediate right. and advanced because right. you're trying more difficult things. Sure. Sure. Wear your helmet, wear your vest. And reach out if you need help. And, and you know, which brings us to the, to the end of this segment. If you ever are at a point in your, in your wing foiling journey to where you're just, you're at a, you're at a, you're hitting a wall, you're not able to progress through, um, maybe that's a good sign to just stop, pump the brakes and, and reach out for, for help. Give us a call, contact us. We're always happy to help. I mean, that's, that's why we're here. And, and there's, no, there's no bad question. There's, there's no stupid question. Uh, we will always stop and take the time to make sure that you have the information that you need in order to make uh, progress with this. So that's very important. This is a very complicated three-dimensional with three power sources. It's like a Swiss watch. If mm -hmm. one gear is out of alignment, yeah. it doesn't tell time. Sure. And if you're hitting a wall, you probably one little thing that you're missing. And yep. if we help clear it up, it could make the difference between having fun and being yeah. frustrated. One point of reference on that, not to get too long winded here, was, was your uh, analogy um, of, of sliding the wing back. It was like the sliding door analogy, right? You Slide it you, back takes you upwind. You helped me to go upwind. Slide it forward takes you downwind. Yeah. I had balance. I had an understanding. I had hydrofoil experience. I was on the board with the foil down in a light wind scenario. And I remembered you talking about just by sliding the wing 
to the, it's like the sliding door analogy. Right. All of a sudden, I slide the wing back and I little twist upwind, and all of a sudden, now I'm taking an upwind tack. And it yeah. was just that little, just that one little thing that I remembered through your the way that you teach your 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 writing things, you're verbalizing, you're showing, and you're using analogies. And I and I, while I was out there on the water, somewhat frustrated getting pushed downwind, I just remembered that. And I thought, oh yeah, I could slide the wing back, slide the, you know, sh slide the door shut or open, whichever. And all of a sudden I'm taking an upwind tack. And so that was cool. I appreciate yeah. that very much, man. <laughs> Those little things are extremely important. Um, do you have anything further uh, that we need to add to this before we close? Uh, I think we're done with this section. We're cool. almost through. Awesome. Guys, thank you for watching. Uh, this is Eric and I'm Aaron. If you have any questions, please, like we said before, do not ever hesitate to reach out. That's what we're here for. We're always happy to help. And uh, until next time, hope to see you guys out there on the water.